Did you know that the US is apparently only 50% the size we are told? Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tim Fall Tuesdays with me, Simon Dan. Yes, that was YouTuber Jason Maggard making the incredible claim that the US is not as big as we think. You may recognise the name, actually. Jason made an appearance in the very first Flat Earth Fail compilation. Here's a reminder. If you go down here to Cape Town, which is way below the equator, it is at 18 degrees east. Um, in Cape Town, though, I've always been taught that the sun sets earlier in the east than in the west due to the rotation of the earth. You can see that the sun is not setting for another 50 minutes. His blistering display of logic and reason was so good back then that I thought I'd go back and take a look to see what he was up to now, and boy, I wasn't disappointed. The whole thing starts at a local airfield. Yeah, traffic on the freeway's beating him. Shit. It is, Scott. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Easily calculated. That's an interesting statement. Okay, let's continue. Shit. It is, Scott. It's close. You can track his shadow in the yeah. trees versus the cars on the Oh, place. yeah. Okay, you're tracking the plane's shadow. Fair enough. I can't see it on the video, but I'll take your word for it. It's close. I did know that, yes. However, if you take a look at the very first frame of your video, where you've zoomed in on the plane you're looking at, you can see that this is not a jet. It's a light aircraft. These planes are considerably slower than jets. So it's not surprising that their speed is similar to the cars on the road below at this point. Now that's a jet. He's going like three times the speed of that last one. Yeah. Twice. He's going 16. Yeah, he might be Maybe also, huh? So it's just hard to gauge. 60? You think that that jet you just filmed was only going 60 miles per hour? Come on even though straight afterwards you said it's hard to gauge. Across the tree line, much faster than the cars. He's going about 100. Now it's about 100. Brilliant. You've not got a clue at all. See those corporate jets? And he's going to really have to put on the brakes. So this is a diagram he's made that shows all the distances involved according to his best guess. Let's keep this in mind and we'll refer to it again later. Behind. 
and you lost. Come on, you'll get him next time. Or, what is this lunatic doing racing planes? Okay, so across that distance, you averaged 40 miles per hour. Great. I have a friend who's a pilot. He's reliably informed me that this particular plane is a Learjet. He also told me that they have a landing airspeed of around 130 miles per hour. Thanks, James. So his estimate of three times is a fair one. Let's move on. Okay, I shall. Right, let's refer back to Jason's drawing. Remember, this is his own representation of the scene. So Jason's SUV did the 240 feet at an average speed of 40 miles per hour. 240 feet is 1 22nd of a mile. So if we do, if we do 1 over 22 as the distance and divide that by 40 miles an hour, we get 0.001136 hours. Let's multiply that by 3,600 and it gives us 4.1 seconds. Now, as the plane completed its course in roughly the same time, then we can come up with an approximate ground speed. The plane's course was 430 feet. So we convert that to miles and divide that by our time in hours. And that gives us an approximate speed of around 80 miles per hour. It's important to remember a couple of things here though. One, Jason's dimensions are not entirely accurate. Just a 10% error could change our result. More importantly though, airspeed is not always the same as ground speed. If there was a 25 mile, mile per hour headwind here, that means airspeed would be 105 miles per hour, much closer to the landing speed we're looking for. No, it didn't look that fast, but as we've just seen, your calculations do not show the plane at a speed three times slower than it should be. He may not know he was racing you, but he was probably well aware that a maniac in a black SUV was giving it some in a car park. Hang on, I thought it was three times slower. Where's the 50% come from? <clears throat> now come on. Some extremely poor evidence collected by you whilst conducting a woeful experiment does not prove that the US is 50% smaller than we... What? My dry cleaning's done already? They told me it'll take a week and it's only been three days. I knew there was something fishy about that suit. Clearly it's smaller than I thought. Must be a kid's one. As I was saying, it does not prove that the US is 50% smaller than we thought. Yeah, thanks Dave for showing Jason a thing or two. 
maybe we should take a sneaky look at your channel as well. So there we have it. According to Jason, the USA is only half the size we are told it is because he raced a landing jet in his SUV. Wow, even I can't keep a straight face on that one. Right, that about wraps it up for another Tin Tinfoil Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. Please, please, please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. I'll see you all on Friday where we look at a video that's been made especially for us heliocentric believers. See you all then. Bye.